Welcome to another edition of Love Vocals Nation, where we delve into the lives and experiences of vocalists who have left an indelible mark on the music industry. Our very special guest today is known far and wide as The Voice. And after making some of the biggest and best international dance anthems of the last decade, including four official four, top 40 UK hits, including Freemasons, Free Your Mind, and Avicii, Seek Bromance, gaining a sensational number one in the dance charts and garnering over 70 million views on YouTube. Her rise to success has been nothing short of extraordinary. Not only a vocalist and dance music superstar, the amazing artist is also a successful songwriter. We welcome today none other than the amazing Amanda Wilson. Woo! Welcome, welcome Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> so good to have you here. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. It's cold today. I feel cold. Is it? Yeah. It's actually I've been wearing really like, nice weather here. here. I'm like freezing. I'm not like, right. I'll get, get the uh, hoodie on. Yeah, I'm back with <laughs> the winter clothes again. Yeah. You know what the UK's like? It, it just can't make up its mind. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. the same in Ireland, you know. One day it's like sunny, and they, you know what? They said it's going to be twenty-four degrees. I don't believe it. It's no, probably no, going to be ten. It's four, you know? Yeah, we have four seasons in a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to make you really jealous and say that it's thirty-two degrees here. Oh, Although I'm sitting, I know, you're Audrey, sitting I'm in a hoodie. I know. What the heck's that all about? Come on. What is that? <laughs> Just showing off our, you know. Oh, the gear, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I like yeah. it. The merch. That's <laughs> right. So, Amanda, we're super excited to to have you here. And uh, I must admit, I'm a little bit starstruck because um, when I was 20, I used to have MTV on in the background all the time. And your hits started to come all the time. I was like, wow, wow why, what is this? And then I heard, like, Seek Bromance. Mm -hmm. And I stopped in front of the TV and I had to look. I was like, whoa who is this amazing singer i really want to be like her one day oh. and years later here we're sitting and, and chatting so we're just so thrilled to, to have you here with us oh thank you that i really appreciate you saying that thank you yeah <laughs> <laughs> you've been a huge inspiration there oh. You go. oh thanks <laughs> you know i don't think of it like that when i'm you know singing and doing music i don't think actually when i get messages from people and they're like i was going for a breakup at that time and that song really helped me through it and i think it's little things like that you know even if it's just one person you know exactly like, yeah it's such a difference isn't it it's like therapy, music is therapy you know so yeah 100 so my first question to you amanda is who is amanda wilson <laughs> Well, <laughs> uh, Amanda, oh God, that's a really good question. Um, Amanda Wilson of late has, uh, has uh, changed her style a little bit. So I'm doing a bit more 80 synth stuff, which hasn't been released yet. But I'm known in the industry as uh, EDM. I, I do electronic dance music. But I love piano house. And and if I like the record, I'll record it. It's, it's not really, I don't know. I've just been known as a, this dance singer, but actually I sing all different kinds, but the ones that are uh, like sort of well-known. Um, I'm lots of things. I'm a mother, I'm a pain in the arse, I'm, 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 I'm loads of things. So, uh, yeah, just, I'm just, I don't think about it, to be honest. I just, I don't really have an ego with it. I just. I love that. Yeah. So how did you get the like started in the music industry tell us like the story behind yeah well um i was quite late to sort of singing i started singing about 12 and i started doing set from about 16 i started doing session singing and um it's but that's basically for people that don't know it's just i just go to a studio record a song um for somebody to pitch to another artist so it might be that they wrote a song for celine dion and they want somebody to sing it of a particular standard in order to pitch it to labels right yeah and yeah. um and i started doing that and i was doing that for x amount of years uh, in between my my normal daytime job and then i met freemasons <laughs> it's just really weird i was working with some guys in bromley i recorded a song with them they sent it to Loaded Records, which was Freemason's label at the time, and they said, we don't really like the song, but we really like the singer. Can we have her details? Wow. Yes. That was great. Love it. Mm. <laughs> but then I went to Brighton and I recorded Love On My Mind. Yeah. And then 
and then nothing happened for about nine months i thought it was just another session you know i do plenty of them and just forget about it that's the best mm. thing to do in the music industry is just sing it you know sing it and just forget about it because whatever's going to happen is going to happen with it yeah. and then and then i got a call from the label that oh we you know it's um c listed on radio one and i was like wow and then it eventually went up to a list and then wow they were like do you want to do a video we're going to do a video you know i was in ibiza like doing cafe man but it was really um, amazing yeah it was really um it was quite scary at the time really because I'd gone from like this nine five job going to the gym, going home, you know, chilling out, you know, going to bed by nine. And then yeah. like in a matter of like a month, I'd gone from that, giving up my job to like doing video shoots. It was such a surreal wow. my mum. Wow. Yeah, my mum was just coming with me to every single gig and did yeah. she? Oh, yeah. Oh my god, it's so cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah, she loved it. She was like my little roadie. She was just like, yeah, she's cool. So you, so all, so all of the kind of session singing kind of led up to meeting the Freemasons. That got it. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So, what what made you become a singer? I mean, what brought you to that place where you decided that you just wanted to be a vocalist, writer? <laughs> this is a story I told my friend the other day actually. In the in the news of the world, they used to have a magazine in there and you could buy five CDs for 40 pounds. I mean, you guys might be too too, you know, young to, you know, know <laughs> what this you know, but I just I, I Oh, we know about the get, CDs and all that. Yeah, they used to get five <laughs> CDs for 40 pounds. And so I wrote a little slip out, I hope I'm not gonna get done for this, as Mr. Wilson, and I I got Lionel Richie, Mariah Carey, mm. Prince. I've got like Dirty Dancing album. So I've got them all delivered. Obviously didn't pay for it. Because <laughs> yeah. that was Mr. Wilson. There was right. no Mr. Wilson in the house. Um, <laughs> so then I started playing this Mariah Carey one and I was like, oh, I like this. I like this girl. I like this girl. And I started mm. singing and then I thought, well, maybe I can sing. And yeah. then it all went from there, really. And I started copying her like listening to every single song and watching her on tv and stuff because obviously we didn't have youtube back in that day so yeah you know i just i just studied her and i started almost copying what she was doing mm. wow. and then over the years i developed my own style but I, you know i still love her to bits you know I think she's yeah fun. yeah i saw her in a concert like just some i don't know some year ago uh -huh. and i started to cry like <laughs> it yeah. was like unreal like when she took i was like there's no way she's gonna take those high tones she yeah. did it live and i was like the really really holy the god like they'll do the whistle can't you like, yeah yeah yeah. Really, yeah yeah it's crazy i yeah. can't do that that like i cannot do that. i tried <laughs> it just sounds like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so your your voice has been on like you've been in various genres of music including you know like house and pop uh mm -hmm. and edm how do you how do you adapt your vocal style and approach when you're working on different types of music i think so uh, it depends who i'm working with at the time some people want to like push me a little bit to be sound a little bit different um but i think i mainly just go with the flow of the record and usually you know how to approach it um sometimes i i get ideas from other people and they say have you thought about doing it this way and then that's what makes me kind of come across a little bit differently as an artist. But mainly on every song, you know it's me. <laughs> you go, yeah. oh, that, that, that's me. You know, like people know it's me. So I don't, I'm not usually too different. And I'm all for like just going with the flow and just, you know, whatever comes out, it's, it's, that's how it's supposed to sound, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which John, uh, genre do you prefer? Oh God, I'm I'm really into like AT synth and and pop, that, yeah right. the pop stuff. I, I I love EDM, but I don't get that many good tracks for EDM anymore. I don't. Mm. Yeah, you I need don't, to change that. Yeah, listen I up, get stuff over, listen up, producer. This is yeah. the 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 Maria, Maria Carey of EDM. Like you need to <laughs> give her some good demos here. Yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you? Can I ask you this question? Is it something that jumps into my mind often? Is like back back in the 90s there was like phenomenal bands there was phenomenal uh, production teams and it feels like and maybe it's just me being older i don't know yeah. but it feels like a lot of things sound the same these days yeah it does do you do you, do you find that 
yeah it does yeah i don't like songs as much as i used to i'm still listening to yeah. all old stuff i don't i don't yeah. some, good, some new stuff does come through and it's great but there's so much of it and it's so i agree yeah it's so fragmented now there's no yeah i don't so know much. It's just, yeah it's um it's hard to find good songs because there's so many of them and you don't need to be at the top of the chart in order to have a hit anymore it's all changed yeah you know mm. it needs to be on tiktok I fucking hate TikTok. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan either, to be no, honest. No, every so, time yeah. I go on it, I just think because my son he like, he wants to go on it. I said he's not allowed TikTok. He's only eight. Uh, I'm not allowed. Yeah. I'm not allowed TikTok. <laughs> it's just oh, I don't know. I just don't like. You just waste your life on it, you know. And I, even me putting videos up and trying to do because I have to promote myself. Obviously, mm, I've of just, course. I, I can't do it. I've lost touch with that. Yeah, yeah technology side of things um, i get you i get yeah. you're not alone on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i think for, for me certainly i it just seems like it's lost that wow factor mm. i just remember back in the day stuff would come out and you go oh yeah. yeah oh my god that thing that i i don't get that anymore well we really no. get that no no i don't either i don't yeah. get it yeah, yeah. And, and everyone we know and love is is unfortunately dying or dead um, all their iconic artists, I mean, including Tina Turner. I mean, that's, yeah, that's it, that was yeah. really it's so sad. Yeah. All the people Huge we grew up listening to, you know. But I tell you, I did do a gig um, last last August, and uh, I've never done that. It's, it's a festival called Reminisce, and it's, uh, I can't remember what it was now, but I got to meet five, Wigfield, uh, like, um, <laughs> Angie Brown. I got to meet all these 90s and, like, 2000, and I loved Amazing. it. it so good honestly it was really good and it was nice to share the stage room because that they're who i was listening to growing up you know yeah i do miss i uh, like being in a city store just like looking at a like just a single right mm -hmm. uh, and like they made like a little artwork for it and all the lyrics all it and and you read through like the whole thing and you're like oh my god i can't wait till i get home to to play this over and over and over again <laughs> exactly. until you could like until your mom like throw it out because it's <laughs> enough, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, but I miss I that feeling, you know. That I miss that too. Things. Yeah, I do. I took my son into HMV and uh, he was like, "Wow, he's like <laughs> he's never seen this before." And I'm like, "This is like this is the CDs and the DVDs and all that." And he was amazed. I miss. I think kids have missed out. You know, the kids of his generation, anyway. Yeah. I feel sorry because music's like disposable now. I mean, I'm, he's lucky to listen to 10 seconds before he listens to something else. Whereas, as you said, we played it to death. Like, yeah, we, we know every word, every yep. lyric, every, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they became, all part, they became part of our, our kind of day-to-day -day lives. And you could talk to your friends about it and go, oh, isn't that an amazing track? Let's get the album. Yeah. Mm -hmm. None of that. Yeah. No, I don't feel It's so that. sad. Mm. It you is. Know, I need to bring that back. <laughs> yeah, bring it back. Yeah, it'd be lovely to bring it back. It would. I mean, vinyl does try and make a comeback, doesn't it? When I, I would like to release an album towards the end of this year, if not next year, and I definitely Ooh. am going to do some vinyl and some. Yeah, nice. I, I've got yes, to. I've got bring a it back. Physical copy in my hand. Yes. Even if, even if it's just me I that holds that. it. I yeah. miss that. I love. I've got all my vinyl still, and I love yeah. it. I won't mm -hmm. get rid of that. I love it. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So super excited for that. So in addition to your work as a vocalist, you also have written songs for other artists, right? I don't really write songs for other people anymore. I just write songs really? for me. And that's okay. mainly because of time. You yeah. Know, I used to, before, you know, I had my son, I used to be either and everywhere doing like write, songwriting parties, but my time's really precious now. So mm. most of the time I'm writing stuff for me. That there will okay. be one that I do have, yeah. I work with um a lot of different record companies doing library music as well. Yeah, um, do you? where like stuff for TV and in video games and, and films and whatever. And the good oh. thing about that is is that it doesn't have to be typical Amanda Wilson. I do have to kind of think outside the box. Right. Okay. That. So that because otherwise, you know, when you're thinking about advertising, the lyrics have to be a specific way. Um, it has to be, yeah, you know, if you've been given a brief, it has to follow that brief, you know, so I can't just yeah. start on a tangent and do anything. Mm -hmm. That I do really enjoy, and that is kind of what pays the bills, I suppose. Um, record sales, I, I don't earn anything from record sales mm. anymore. Isn't that bizarre? We're going to come it to is. that later yeah. on in this uh, interview, but, I mean, yeah. that's a really big topic. 
yeah, yeah. for a lot of vocalists and, and writers yeah. yeah exactly definitely yeah i'm curious are you signed to any publisher no no so you're Have copyright you control i i work with all different record companies and like so I work with Universal or BMG, and and I, I don't think I will ever ever sign a publishing deal with one company again. Why? Can because I ask? I, I'd be <laughs> I've I've signed publishing deals before, and nothing yeah. happens. And you get money at the beginning. You're like, oh, I like this money, mm. but now I've got to think of the bigger picture, you know. And you don't get like I mean, I know I wouldn't get it probably unless I had a massive massive hit. You know, mm -hmm. the, the deals of like 50 grand or 100 grand, you know, yeah. unless you're on piano. Or, gone days. Don't, I don't even think Rihanna <laughs> writes music. I don't know if she actually writes her own songs. So, but mm -hmm. like people like Mariah Carey could get that kind of money, and if not, obviously loads more. But yeah, yeah, I don't think I could sign to one one publishing company, not at the moment, because I'd be too frightened to, in case if it don't work out with them, I'm tied in for 10 years and I've done it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were, it was a good publishing company that I was with. But yeah, I just don't think I'd do it now. Okay, mm -hmm. what do you think if if other vocalists are thinking about you know signing to any publisher? What should they think about them? What should they uh, take in consideration? Always get a lawyer. <laughs> okay, yeah. always get a lawyer because I've made that mistake before where I'm like I can't really afford one. Maybe I'll just sign it and just you know a publishing mm -hmm. deal for a long time sometimes they write stuff in it which is is for a lifetime which i don't think that should uh you know like it's got no ex expiration date like you just got to look for things like that yeah um and you just got to make sure that the percentages are fair and that they uphold their side of it but you definitely need a, a lawyer for that mm -hmm. you know? um i have got a couple of contacts so if anybody is listening i could direct them that way the ones that don't cost a fortune you know yeah it's really yeah. handy to know that's yeah. a great thing it is i've got it's a couple it. of people yeah so if, if anyone's listening to this and and want uh to be pointed in the right direction they can contact us and we'll pass their details on to amanda yeah 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 we'll do that yeah i i love that you're talking about publishing i'm interested if you don't mind me asking and you don't mind you don't need to answer this but how many publishing deals have you had in your career i've had two two mm. and for kind of like 10 years is that what i'm hearing you say yeah, roughly that, yeah. right yeah. Mm -hmm. what were the what were the pitfalls in those having to you know do that full 10 year stint what was the pit, pitfalls for you uh well the good thing is on the second one, I actually recouped the money that was advanced to me. So I was seeing money coming through, uh, but the advance wasn't ridiculous, which I'm not crazy about. Like it doesn't have to be a massive advance because you, mm. at the end of the day, you have to pay that money pay it back. back. It's not yeah. right. So if you get 20, 30 grand, you ain't going to see money for X amount of time until you've obviously earned okay, enough yeah. money. So the pitfalls is obviously if you get approached by another, um, record company you want to sign that half of the publishing you can't <laughs> right you mm -hmm. can't because everything's got to go through that that publishing company there are com there are i suppose publishing deals where you can sign a certain amount of songs that you've done to them but it's right. not an exclusive deal right but most people do want you exclusively yep yeah and, yeah. yeah and cer certainly these days they do they want everything today what do you think yeah. is better than like um like there, you, sometimes as a, a vocalist, singer, or even musicians, there are some some labels that let's say they want to sign some songs with you, yeah, and they want to uh, do a publishing deals like just for that specific song. Is that yeah. better than having ten year contract in your opinion? Yeah, I mean the ten year. I mean their contract would still last over ten years because they mm. need to earn money on that record, and it yeah. might be that the contract with those songs ends in ten years, but then they earn money on it from another for another X amount of years. Mm -hmm. um, but at least then it's only for those songs, and, and you can go off and work with other companies. Other companies, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I just think exclusive is just uh, well, it's yeah. the all of everything, isn't it? And as yeah. you say, if you don't recoup then yeah. that's that that track stuck there yeah. until until yeah. you and if they're not actively getting you on yeah. um to work with people and, and yeah. getting you in with people then yeah. what are you going to do you because you can't go off and and work with 
whoever, whoever else. Right. You can, mm -hmm. but you have to sign it to this this record company. You know, right? They yeah, have to be really active in trying to get you to recoup that money they've given you. You know, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think this is this is a kind of topic that we're going to be uh, tackling on its own uh, in, in in sort of other uh, podcasts. But I think that, um, and this is just my my opinion, um, that unless, as you say, you're getting a really large amount of money and you've got a really good lawyer and you cut a really good deal and mm -hmm. you don't feel that you're completely stuck in that. I just these days I just don't see the point unless they're an enormously proactive publisher Definitely. and getting you tons and tons and tons yeah. of you know collabs that you can potentially yeah. and, and if you're stuff. an artist signed to them as well it right. makes sense to do it in-house yeah. but if yeah. you're releasing one one song assignments or anything but you're exclusive I just I don't see the point in doing yeah. it but you know but if you're like an artist you know with whoever and they say right we're going to sign you as a brand and we're going to mm. we want your pub understandably they're going to want your publishing and that's fair enough because they're investing in you as as the brand as the artist as the brand yeah but if it was just somebody that approached saying really like your songs i'd like to sign you as a publisher uh sign you as a writer um yeah, yeah i i don't i don't think i could do it okay. right what and what do you think so this is the last question on this one but yeah. So many, uh, especially in the EDM sector, there's so many labels that are signing artists, publishing, yeah, with no advances, yeah, in perpetuity, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and it just it astonishes me. And I think, and I think a lot of a lot of artists go into that in just out of not being educated. And, yeah. You know, so, what would you say to them on that topic? Well, I wasn't educated for the, for, and I'm still no expert, but for the first, like, I'd say 15 years of my career, I was not educated on it at all. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's only been burnt <laughs> if I learned the hard way, and I have yeah. learned the hard way, yeah. um, that I've I've learned to read between the lines and look at, look at every contract and make sure I do get legal advice. But I can understand contracts. I can understand the jargon a little bit now. Okay. Yeah. You know, what's written and yeah, right. you know, like, and, yeah, stuff like that. And, and that's and I, that's one of the things that we really, really want to do is help educate people to be mindful about what they're signing away, because yeah. ultimately this is our craft. And back in the day, we we used to we used to say this is your pension. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that makes um, publishing even more important to be mindful of just signing away but we're yeah. going to do we're going to do a much broader focus on this and bring in some media lawyers from both the states and yeah. from the uk and and we can talk about this more i need i need it to be easy understandable yeah right. digestible bites right. when right. you look at a, a legal contract you're like right. what, the, what the fuck is that i don't yeah. and it's, you know you're reading like and it's yeah it, you need somebody who's going to say what. Well, when you see this, this is what it means because it is right. like another language to me. It, well, yeah. and they do they do that deliberately. They do oh that yeah, deliberately. of course they do. And, yeah. They want it to and, be like yeah. difficult to understand. <laughs> yeah, we're going to pay you. But it's got to be on a Tuesday between three and four p.m. But the weather's got to be the right condition. You know, like insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And and also as a side note, this is one of the things we did with the VSA is that we actually created a standard contract yeah. and and we and we we took it piece by piece we took every pitfall we could find for vocalist songwriters mm -hmm. and we made and we made it's out there so people can have it for free everybody that's listening if you want a copy of this contract oh, you can get it for free that's um great. and we've had it looked over by lawyers everyone's gone thumbs up on it so there you go that's right that's really good i'll have a copy of that please if you don't You're mind no <laughs> problem coming at you we, we'll uh, fix it <laughs> uh, uh, okay what was the first song that really changed your life? You were saying, I think, before that it was that moment when you met the Freemasons. Is that the case? Yeah, I mean, because the the year before that, Lola's theme was out, and it was um, <gasps> Great the, the, yeah, which I, I I absolutely loved the the brass like oh you know, yes, you know, like that old disco kind of feel, and yeah, uh, yeah. and then Love My Mind is it's not the same, but it's it's. It's got this similar energy. It's yeah. got that similar thing to it. So yes. I was like, wow, this Absolutely. is great. 
it's really good so when i sang it i thought i really love this it's really good and they pitched yeah. the vocals down obviously because the chorus a lot of people don't know this but the chorus is actually the original vocalist jackie moore in the chorus no way oh, and did I not know the that verses. yeah wow. Oh, yeah. ah, interesting. Yeah, so they pitched my vocals down in the verses to kind of sound along the same. She's quite a deep deeper. Vocal. Yeah. yeah deep okay. Vocal, yeah. Okay. Because yeah, well, I remember that, just yeah. listening to that song. I was like, "Wow, yeah. she can really change her voice and like going more deep." You know. Well, and yeah, it's so interesting to to hear the story. Yeah, um, but you've got a four octave range, so you can get down. Oh, into, I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah. It's just, people do that now. They, I mean, they didn't do it much back then. They do it now all the time. Mm. They they pitch the vocals down and slow them down, and you know they do all sorts yeah. of stuff now. So yeah, it, I think when I sing it live, it does still sound. No one's ever gone. That sounds different. Yeah. So when exactly. I sing it live, I still yeah. sound. I think I still sound the same. So okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not frauding people. <laughs> 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 I was going to, yeah. going to say that we also you you were part of the writing team, weren't you? On on that track, is that the case? No, I never wrote that track. You didn't? No, I didn't. No, Linnea. that track, that love on my mind mm. track, is mm. half a Jackie Moore song and half a Tina Turner song. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Cut and shut. How about that? So it <laughs> is pretty much like that. So. um when the heartache is over, I know I won't be missing you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's actually yeah. Tina Turner's "When the Heartache Is Over" song. Oh, wow! Yeah. And I've got love on my mind is Jackie Moore's "This Time Baby," which was released Aye. in nineteen sixty something, I think. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, so I have a question That's then. Amazing! Well, it's fantastic. These are like legendary songs that you basically were able to play around with and do something really creative with. Mm -hmm. um great. for that song and became like such a major hit first of all but um did you have to go to like say tina turner's management to ask for permission or do you do you know how that process looked like no do you know what i don't actually know how that i don't actually know what happened in that sense okay. because it would be it, it's not a straight cover it's an adaptation because there's yeah. two different records and they're coming together mm. so i would assume that freemasons didn't get any publishing i would be very surprised if they did but i actually don't know um they might have got a little bit but yeah they're two massive records just so yeah, one, yeah. Even know, at least right. each isn't they so that's under gone that's it no, so i don't sense. actually know yeah i don't know but yeah, it's interesting actually because the other day I found out when the heartache is over that the uh, Tina Turner track is written by the guy who the Nightcrawlers guy pushed the feeling on. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. by him. Wow! He put, like, he put in his post, "Oh, Tina Turner, you know, I'm so privileged that I got to write a song for her," and I was like, "Really?" And then it was wow. like when the heartache is over, so I was like, "Oh, oh wow, yeah. yeah, that's amazing," and mm -hmm. that then sheds light on why we noted that there was six different writers yeah on the credits okay yeah. that makes That's sense still now. Than now now there's about 20 on a song and i'm like <laughs> wow <laughs> really <laughs> tons on a song some i mean with seek romance there's tons of writers on that song mm. yeah wow. including yeah so we noticed there were six songwriters at least uh yeah. on seek romance mm -hmm. um was everyone in the same room at the same time when oh, you wrote that song or how was that process this is a really really long story that i'm going to okay. try and uh, shorten for you because a okay. lot of people don't know this <laughs> i did actually mention it in, in an interview that i'd done a couple of months ago so the love you seek was written with about six or seven people i flew over to italy to record it changed a few of the lyrics recorded it took some publishing on it so i wasn't mm. in the room when they wrote the song but i went in to adapt a few of the lyrics yeah right. mm. so then we'd all split our publishing splits i'd got my publishing splits and then <laughs> the vocal from love you seek got put on tim berg aka avici's um bromance track yeah so wow. it became a bootleg like a mashup yeah, again, I've got this thing mm. about people sticking two tracks together. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Tim's management took 50% publishing, which meant that we all had to 
divvy out divvy out the other 50 mm. the other 50 percent because he was such a big name you know he'd yeah. already been on the scene and that and then that's how that happened and that was i mean tim never made that record he obviously made the instrumental but he never put the vocal on it and also um the the people in italy who we wrote the song with they didn't put the vocal on it it was just a random person who done it mixed really? it, wind of it and then and then they said we love this we want to sign it and i was like wow that's that's how weird things happen like that in this I, that is crazy, crazy. I know wow. clearly, Amanda. The universe is coming up to meet you. Oh uh, yeah, I do think that sometimes because I think, I think if you focus on the outcome too much, mm -hmm. you won't get results. But I, mm. I sing songs all the time, and then I just forget about them. Forget yeah. about them. And if they mm. do well, then great. And if they don't, they don't. It's, yeah. it's out of your control, especially now because you don't even have to do loads of like promotion or PR stuff now because, you know we don't have top of the pops or the pepsi chart show or I these know. big morning mm. television you know you don't have you don't ha have to do all that now yeah just do like a couple of tiktok videos with a, some puppies running around <laughs> it's and, it's and, there, and there i come back to my you know and uh, what is it that the record labels are doing these days and my question to you is do you think that record companies, to some degree, are obsolete these days? Yeah, <laughs> they are. But the only thing is, I think, in terms of accounting and stuff like that, it's better to get somebody else to do it. Because if you've got, um, say, uh, say, like I've, I've written with a, my producer called Steve, and we we self release it because we don't need a label. Right. Mm. Then I've got to account. I've got to get the money, collect the money, and then I've got to make sure that I divvy that money up between him. And then and and sometimes when you're creative, you don't want to do all that shit. No. Because mm -hmm. you know? yeah. I'm no good at it anyway. So it's better for somebody else to do it. But then. I do feel that, I mean, I've signed tracks to a lot of labels and they don't account. Hello. So yeah. happy to hear another person. I mean, Linnell also echoed this as well. Mm -hmm. I am so sick of mm. labels running away. I feel like they run away with the track. They give it the big, you know, woo in the beginning. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, never hear from them again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had that so many times. And I'm like, really? And, and, I just find it a horribly disrespectful. Yeah. Very demeaning. Labels ultimately require we creators to have a product to sell. Would yes. you agree with that statement? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Why do they treat us so poorly? Question mark. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I could set up a label tomorrow though and take on a load of artists and then not pay them. It's, I think it's almost like people have got the idea of having a label, but they don't understand the actual you know everything behind it mm -hmm. um so there's there's too many labels that don't they're not proactive enough that's the thing you've got to find a label that you know has got a history um and and the ones that don't account i just don't work with them again it's as simple as that really and, yep. and, and that's another reason obviously why i would people do need a record label and i think sometimes i do need a record label because if you're dealing with 40 different labels you've got to try and chase up the accounts for all of them it's almost like we need some sort of oh, i don't know like we need it's, I, I have to tap every single rep company up to pay me it's exhausting let's imagine that there was a central accounting yeah platform I'm and just run yourself as a business sign up to them know they're going to collect for you that's it they, yeah. they, they take the tiniest percentage because yeah. that, would, that would be ethical and um and you could just they could just be your collection yeah agency. it's a bit like neighboring rights isn't it it's a bit right. like P prs where right. oh no um, right. PPL, um right. where you know because PPO are a really good collection society yeah but they, they might not go into every single nook and cranny whereas right. if Go with a, another company they'll go into um territories direct and there'll be no double dipping where right. they'll take five percent and then it, when it gets to this side they'll type five five percent you've got a company that goes in and collects from collects, everywhere yeah, yeah from everywhere from, from everywhere. Like, you know and, like really really small territories and well. that would be that would be phenomenal and yeah. i think that perhaps the one thing they do rely on is the fact that people don't know information yeah. they don't know who they just rely on these people to go and do it yeah. and, and and it's funny because audrey gallagher came up with a really good point uh last week and she said 
you know if the the, the djs for example this is an example because you're talking about ppl um yeah. if they actually were it was mandatory to put their set lists in yeah mandatory yeah we would get paid yeah 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 they, mm. and i don't think they understand that by not doing that which yeah. could take 15 minutes mm -hmm. um we end up losing out in a lot of money but those agencies are collecting yeah so, yeah, where, yeah. Where, so where's that money <laughs> oh I, I don't know i have no idea i know obviously you need a prs license if you're going to play music in a right you know mm. um but as for pp as for ppo as in play like as in playing a dj set list i wasn't aware that they don't have to submit no. what they're playing that's no. yeah no, they just yeah, it's have, not um you know, the club would need like... to have a license wouldn't they to actually play music right well that's the yeah. that's what it should be but yeah Linnea, but Linnea is also a dj and she's had experience of this and I and, also have a label, by the way. And she also has a label. So I'm on all the sides, like a vocalist oh, label. I'm so, sure yours is lovely. Like, you want slack them all off. I'm sure you see <laughs> We're trying to see, like, what difference we can make. Obviously, like, my label is just, like, pretty much, like, started, right? We don't have, like, the massive revenue maybe that Sony has yet, for example. Yeah. But let's say Sony um, or other labels you know um they have the responsibility to to help the artist a little bit more yeah, i do I believe that and i try to i try to see mm. you know with my label what i can do and and try to change that you know yeah. by having those conversations mm. yeah that's good yeah i think it's um it's treating um artists as people as well like because i just i like to feel like i'm I've got a team around me. You know when you see sports and they all go round and they're like, right, you can do this. You know, yeah, no, I've got you covered. It. We need that in the music. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I think it was like that back in the like, day. You know? you know, yeah, it's you're a product, and if you don't do as you're told, you can fuck off. Basically, that is yeah. it. Right. No, I think the I, difference. I don't want that. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the difference. I'd do it on my own. Mm. Yeah, the, the difference, like between like before back in the days, like, compared to now. Is that artist basically has to sell themselves they have to go out on social media yeah. they have to look good dance a little bit in a little you know puppy video <laughs> puppy whatever <videos. laughs> a lot of people they start to click likes and that's great and then the labels are like oh great we see a, a great opportunity here to to sell a lot instead of the label you know hearing a really great song mm -hmm. i think they're sherry picking a little bit like they, they do sign a lot of artists, but uh, like looking at all the artists that they sign, they choose one or two or three to really push. Yes. But what happens to the rest of the artists? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. That also deserves the love and attention and, and you know, the, the push. Yeah. And that's exactly the same in publishing companies as well. You know, yeah. if, if someone's got a bigger artist, like if, if I'm going to go with a, a company that's got, a load of A-list writers on it, then why am I going to be priority? Well, I'm, I'm clearly not unless I get lucky. Um, mm. They're going to be the priority because they're earning them more money. So you can get mm -hmm. lost there. I do believe you can get I, lost. I think that's a really good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so we have gone off topic, but that's okay because I love this yeah. conversation. Like this is a great <laughs> conversation. Um, well, it's very educational for people. Some people listening out there might go, oh, "I'm not really understanding everything that we're talking about," because we, you know, we understand the way the way that the system's set up. But for anyone listening who doesn't understand, please just write in or contact us, and and we'll you know help to explain what we're. The, the terms that we're actually yeah. talking about ask yeah. the questions that, that yeah. you always wondered yeah. about in the music industry and we're happy yeah. to discuss in more detail well, yeah absolutely they might not know like prs and ppl and, and yeah. they might not know what all that is i know i certainly didn't when yeah. i started out so yeah one of the one of the things that, that i think is important to bring up is people listening out there vocalists listening out there writers listening out there producers listening out there there are so many revenue streams out there that you can be drawing from and if you don't know what those revenue streams are obviously it's going to be be different territory to territory yeah. but what, if you don't know what they are contact us and we will let you know all the different revenue streams but yeah. we're going to be doing a topic on this on an, on one of the podcasts quite soon
Speaking about massive tunes, we have mentioned this song. You know, you collaborated with Tim Berg, also mm -hmm. known as Avicii, back in yeah. 2010. I think it was released. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was everywhere on the the radio, the TV. You gave us a little story about you know how that came together. Mm -hmm. For me, it was probably the tune of the year when oh, that came it? out, oh, and it's so it catchy. Amazing. And in my opinion, it's the best song Avicii ever ever did. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned a little bit how that came together. And I'm just curious, like, did you and Avicii ever meet up? And and you know, you worked together in the in the music video, never met? No, no I'm not, I wasn't in the music in the video, neither was Tim actually. Um and Ministry of Sound just got some stock people. <laughs> they, oh, okay. they up, put them in. Um, yeah, so none of us, were, none of the artists were in the video. Um, uh, we wasn't asked, actually. Um, it, it all happened so quickly. Uh, mm. and, and also as well, though, I wasn't featured on the record, which was something oh, yes. I really heavily so fought for, um, but didn't get anywhere because I had no representation at the time. Mm. And, uh, so, team's so management were quite hard to communicate with. So, okay. so yeah. Sorry, can, can I just clear up? What do you mean by you weren't featured? What it wasn't uh, uh, it wasn't Tim Berg featuring Amanda Wilson. It was just Tim Berg. <gasps> One of our listeners wrote in saying, I find it inconvenience when I hear a singer I like on a song, but I cannot find them because they're not on the title or credited. Yeah. So I wonder sometimes if singers choose to remain off the title, but that seems really strange to me. Yeah. So that brings me to ask about Seek Bromance. So mm -hmm. your name was not on that song. Uh, so would you like to share like the, the story behind that? You mentioned a little bit like you were, it was difficult working with uh, the management. Or yeah, it was diff it was quite difficult to work with the management because if I'm not represented at the time, I wasn't represented at the time. So I had no voice. I had no team around me to kind of say you can't do this. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, and and I just and. Avicii at the time before he became Avicii obviously he was Tim Berg and he he was a brand you know and and they were building the brand and it was about him right not so much having and and a lot of his records I think didn't have featuring it was just mm -hmm. Avicii it wasn't Avicii featuring unless it was somebody massive like Rita Aurora you know I don't yeah. know as time went on I suppose people started to know who who they who the artist was on the record but for me it was really it was really frustrating because i felt like i was being cut out yeah yeah, yeah. I, and and even from a ppl standpoint Whoa. actually a featured artist gets paid more than a non-featured artist that's really really good that, to share. Really important. yeah so if yeah. you want to be a featured artist you will get paid more ppl interesting we used to have this conversation about featuring uh or putting and on instead of featuring yes. yeah we also have like some conversation about vocal buyout because there's that's a possibility yes it is. Um, but what i hear a lot of people are asking and because it's been coming up also because i recently been on a track mm -hmm. where my name was not included okay and um you know they always come up re with reasons and uh, first of all, I really enjoyed working with all of them. So it's just been a pleasure. But yeah. um, it comes from, in my opinion, it comes from the the places like Spotify, for example. Spotify has um, a rule that you cannot be more than, I think, three people in, in a name in a song. So that okay. means that you have to leave one out or one of, like, what is that? What is that? Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that I needs don't. to be changed, right? So that I've for me, that was the case. Tons of names on them, yeah. So I don't really, yeah, I don't know whether that is. Do you know if that's definitely a fact? That is a fact, yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. It's that absolutely no right. Change yeah, that, this yeah. now. This we need that really change. Not, that this yeah. is not, like yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's so, another got to rely on the labels to actually place it in the right genre, and because I. <laughs> I've known labels to like release EDM tracks under soul and I'm like so yeah so that needs to that needs to make sure that it's in the right genre and it also needs to make sure that obviously that everyone's credited I mean yeah. there's songs out there that I've done my name's not even associated my, um, it's featuring Amanda Wilson when you look at the writing credits I'm not written down 
Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, how did it make you feel when 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 that happened? It's, it, it makes you it's, it makes you feel like you're nothing, <laughs> mm-hmm. even though you're such a massive right. part of the record. It yeah. just makes you feel, and there, there was so many people involved at that point because we had the label in Italy, we had uh, Ministry of Sound, we have it's been licensed to all these different record companies, and and I and I do want to make people aware of this actually because I think it's really important. I didn't actually get paid for that record either. Whoa! So, wow. Um, that pisses and, me off. Yeah, I'm sorry. That, that's, that, <laughs> I'm that, really that, angry that's now. The that really, um, I I woke up because I was wow. I was before this record happened. I was quite blind in, in a sense of I, I didn't really understand the industry, and I still don't because there's so many grey areas. But that track for me really opened my eyes to how much yeah. corruption and and also as well. And I want to talk about this a little bit later when there's a question and answer things about what needs to be in the contract for an artist as well because i think that's really important but we don't have to cover that now no no yeah well i am so sad to yeah, hear that it breaks my heart actually yeah I, it really really does and um and i think what's even sadder is the fact that you are so not alone um because mm-hmm. um you know for the last 11 years you were doing this vsa Um, and speaking to so many really high level vocalists, high level artists like yourself with big hits and the stories are so similar. They are, yeah. And and it's so sad. And uh, and I I, I really, guys, girls, whomever's listening, I want this to stop. This needs to stop. It does need to stop. It really, really does. So I'm so sorry. Yeah, it really breaks my heart. Also your because... <laughs> no, but I'm sorry to hear it. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. And, and I am too. You know, I spent years um, uh, trying to move on from it, almost yeah. resenting the record to a point. Right. But I've still made money through PRS and I've still made money through doing PAs and gigs and I've had so much right. enjoyment out of performing that record. And, you know, and it's it's been it's been it's been great in so many ways, but it, there's still that bitter aftertaste of that's had like 104 million streams on oh. on YouTube, and it's been streamed millions and millions and millions of times. I can't tell you how many times that track has been streamed, and I have not yep. been paid one cent of it. That's just that is that is horrific. Disgu- that, I'm so upset. You know why? Also because. I didn't know about Tim, to be honest, before yeah. I actually heard your voice. Mm-hmm. That uh, really, I stopped in front of t- TV and I was like, wow, mm. <laughs> who is this? <laughs> and I was like, "Where? who is this vocalist? I had to go to Google to, to find you. And I was mm-hmm. like, why is, she, why is her name not on that track? Like, what's going <laughs> yeah. on here? And mm-hmm. it, it breaks my heart hearing this story. It really does. I don't know if, if it's too late to go back and, and even have the discussions, if it's even worth it. Yeah, you have a six-year cut-off to get your royalties. And and I think most of the majority of the record would have been made in, in the first six years. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's still our money now. I'd still earn money from it. But the thing is, as well, I'd need a lawyer. And I tried to get a lawyer, but it just went up to like 800 pound i thought i can't i can't, can't, I can't afford that i can't cough up this money yeah. and and because i don't know and they know this though they know oh that, they know, you know it's, i'm not they gonna use the opportunity you know. oh yeah so if anyone wants to represent me for free on a no win no do you remember no win no we fight basically yes no, one does, no win no, no fee. one does that anymore yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm meant to get paid this money i will and if I'm not, oh, then I'm not good. And I must say, the neighbouring rights company that I use in the UK are really, really good. Their yeah. systems are so transparent that you know what's done what in what territory. Uh, right. They account four times a year. They're on the dot. They're really, really good company. I'm thankful that I actually came what, across What's them. the name of the company? Are you willing to Lime, share? Lime Bloom Music. Lime Bloom. Okay. Yeah, music, so yeah. there you go. There's another tip for everybody listening out there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good, good, good and also, as well, you don't need to ring them up and go, yeah, just to let you know, I've just done this record and, and um, it's featuring. Blah, blah, blah. It, they've got like a system where it just picks it up. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah. So so I go on the pro and I go, oh, they've added Crush because which I had done a yeah. uh, cover of Crush a few months yeah. ago, yeah. and I didn't even have to tell them because it, it must know. So I like things where I don't have to do anything. And yeah, they, they just do it all for me. So that's, that's yeah, that's a good company then. Mm -hmm. for sure. Okay. Just want to put out a warning to all uh, vocalists, songwriters out there that are in this music industry. We know you are super excited to release your music. Mm -hmm. And for example, in your case, Amanda, they found your vocal, put it on, it became a major hit. It can happen. Yeah make sure that even if you work with like like you have a great relationship always make sure that you are covered with a contract doesn't yeah. matter if you're best friends or if you don't even know them mm -hmm. never give away your work this is what can happen this is heartbreaking to hear yes yeah. this is a big warning sign really it really is yeah and it, it it's been happening too many times. I, I I cannot have that happen one more time. I really can't. She was mother bear there. She's yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's um I'm fifty feet from stardom. That's that film, fifty feet. Is it fifty feet yeah. from, twenty feet from stardom? It was happening back then as well. Yeah. Where yeah. I had and not getting paid and not getting similar paid. back in the days. I was working I'm not gonna give names, but I was working with somebody and um the song really hit off great yes. um the label said um we we will offer you one percent because that's industry standards and i'm like hold on i wrote the the melody on the piano i wrote the lyrics i'm singing the lyrics hmm. no this no this is not okay. okay and thankfully i have a brother who's in the music industry as well and he knows, like he knew a little bit more about contracts back then. So yeah, I went to him and he's like, hold up. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I had to fight, really yeah. fight and became like a huge thing for 15%. Yeah. And I, I'm still getting upset today when yeah, I get yeah. my royalties and I see that I'm only getting 50% when that other person is getting the rest. Yeah, and yeah, I know yeah. that both of us did just as much work yeah really did definitely. should yeah. be 50 50 in my opinion yeah no, definitely yeah so I, don't say yes to industry standards talk with come and talk with us if you yeah, have problems with, with your us. contract yeah. come and talk with us are you unsure if if it if feels okay or not come and talk with us we will help you but sometimes when you've got a label that's coming up to you in your in your teens or something, you're like, oh my god, they want to sign. Oh my god, that's so amazing. Yes, you know, and you get, get super you excited get about all that stuff. Yeah, you know, you know but you, that you need to. You definitely need to because uh, otherwise, you just end up we're selling your soul to the devil, basically. Yeah. I think that's really well said, and um, you know, and I I don't mind sharing a, a tiny little story. Um, but when I was just starting out, um, I ended up again fell into working with a really well-known um garage producer and um and i'm just the stuff we did just took off and mm -hmm. um and all of a sudden there was a guy who turns up in the studio and he's like waving this piece of paper in front of me and i like know nothing yeah. and i'm like terribly excited because radio one's playing it and i'm like going holy shit, this is amazing you know and and he said, oh yeah, I've got this. And he wouldn't even tell me what it was. It's just a contract that, because we're doing like Radio One and blah, 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 blah. So me like an idiot. Oh no. I, I said, I, I, and this gets worse, right? Yeah. So hmm. this guy, this guy was a sub publisher. The publishing house he was with wasn't even a very good publishing house. Yeah. So, and, and I didn't even know the difference between a publishing contract and and you know uh, you know an actual just signing signing a record yeah, i didn't know the difference and so i signed it next thing i've got i've got um capital radio picked up on it and next thing i had a telstar contact to me and they wanted to sign me but they went oh what about publishing and what about deal i'd already signed this stupid piece oh, no. yeah it was horrendous yeah but fortunately they liked the track so much they kind of sorted it all out for me okay okay 
lucky. But, but I didn't, I lost my publishing on it. Yeah. And, I, oh, and, I, oh and I was like, yeah, it was, it was terrible. And this is the sort of garbage mm. that I really want young vocalists and writers to hear and understand because there is, as you've just correctly said, there's that excitement about, oh, I, you know, because you want it, you want to make it, don't you? You want yeah, to yeah. be out there. Yeah. And and that's the moment, guys and girls, you need to hit the brakes real hard. Yeah. And you can contact us or, you know, but make sure, go to a lawyer and make sure yeah, that definitely. you don't do anything with Also, intuition as well. Like, if someone's waving a bit of paper and you're like, I'm excited but it's a bit you know go with it because i think intuition wise i ignored so many things i thought was wrong like i was told you know you got to look a certain way you got to lose weight you got to do oh this, yeah, yeah, do yeah. That. and i thought who the fuck are you like like <laughs> <laughs> no offense, um, and you, if you looked in at yourself you know yeah. like it's just, <laughs> honestly, i just from even from when i was young like yeah it was just like you were just this you weren't a person. You wasn't a person at all. No. Mm. No. Nope. I no. actually, um, somebody that I worked with many, many years ago, um, who kind of treated me like a product. He was a friend, but he kind of treated me like a product as well. And oh. we, were, we, were, we wrote songs together. And I said, uh, and he used to tell me sometimes, oh, you need to lose weight, you need to do this. And, I, and he's got kids now. He's got a daughter. I said, how would you like it? Mm -hmm. if someone said that to your daughter he goes right. no i get it he totally regrets doing it now because he's almost become part of the system you know and he went no i get it you know i get that i was wrong and, and that was so wrong it's like you know so he sees it now but no too many people I, are still doing it well this oh, is yeah. it and i and i remember sitting next to the head of Telstar mm -hmm. at the time and we're having a little a little drink around just we just signed contracts and stuff and he and he turned around to me and he said, he said, we're really happy to have you, Antonia, but um, we think maybe uh, maybe you could lose a, a little bit of weight. Yeah. Oh my now God. I'll tell now I'll tell you I tell you Jesus. I was so I, I I was so embarrassed. Eh? Yeah. Okay, and I went and I went crazy um to, because they were doing like lots of photo shoots and stuff and i went crazy and i went and got a trainer and everything and i couldn't afford any of that by the way i mean i just but i had to do it and and i remember now looking back and mm -hmm. seeing the photographs that were taken before i got the trainer yeah and i was thin yeah yeah this is what i mean it's almost like it's a <laughs> thing it's yeah like, we're doing you a favor and we just want to let you know you're not quite good enough mm -hmm. yeah quite good enough so no. you know, dancing around a few because we've got to feel like we're doing something you know i, I think it's but it happens to so many artists i mean yeah. when you think of um hearsay that you know um they, that some of them were told to lose weight and i think everyone has been told i mean i, I like to think that's changed a bit now what was there's a there's a few artists that have come through that are just well known for their music and not their actual looks yeah um but yeah we still we're still in a very sort of perfection filtered yeah um, yes yeah the social media makes you think everybody's so beautiful know, and everybody yeah. has big butts and i don't know what yeah. and it's just ah it's not healthy it's definitely no. not healthy um you know I, I i stopped caring about what people think you know yes. i am who i am yeah. i look who i look you know like <laughs> yeah you know i will go up and wait i will go down who knows yeah you know? we're human but at the end of the day it is so, it's me you, you know. get me if if you like my music listen yeah. to it you know <laughs> right yeah. yep and i think that that's a nice kind of segue into um mental health because yeah. um you know I, i'm i'm a psychotherapist so i ah, so am i <laughs> um so bacp or ukc yeah i'm bacp i'm bacp yeah. as well yeah <laughs> so um so on that particular topic it's really close to my heart because i i i have you know worked with a lot of people who have real um identity uh issues yes. um, really low self-esteem based on uh the, what, what people have told them and it's yeah. got really stark and imprinted mm -hmm. and um and especially in the music industry as you've said you know it's a 
it's an industry where you know the way you look is a is part of the product isn't it it's, and the amount of people that i've spoken to that have it's really destroyed them. it's destroyed them yeah mm. you know it's a machine. this industry is a machine it's it's not it's it it's not um it's not kind a lot of it's not kind yeah they don't treat Everybody. people kindly no nope they do not i've so, always felt like it's a bit like a square peg round whole thing for me because i don't i don't have the ego to match the the success that i want or or have because i i don't want to it's not that i don't want to be at the forefront but I, I don't want the bullshit that comes with it i just want to release music and people to enjoy it yeah I, you know but i have to play the the instagram TikTok oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to try to sell. No, I, yep. I hate it honestly. I really no, do. Yeah. Mm. Well, and I and and again, this this is a this is another point where you know a lot of people don't do it because mm. they don't feel good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Or they just not well, like bother doing it because they they see through it, you know. Mm -hmm. And yes, there is like looking at the music industry. You if if you have like the quality shots and quality video somebody's following you and, and with every perfect shot and you look amazing and whatever yeah people will put a like to that because yeah. it, it creates this fantasy vision right that oh that's that's so great it's just like nice for the eye or whatever yeah. but it's really unhealthy it's it's not good and you know support the music yeah like, you you come to listen to the music and whatever comes with it is just there, you know. And I never knew anything about any of the artists growing up. I just knew the song. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I was like, like, I never knew who Alison Moyet was. I never knew yeah. who Powell was. I never knew who any of those people were. Level yeah. forty-two. I never knew. I just, I just used to listen to the record. I love this record. I don't care who they were. It didn't make yeah. any difference to me. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I will maybe admit that, like. I have to put myself in that kind of position that try to take a nice picture now and then yeah. to make sure, you know, people yeah. are following, know me and whatever, but it's really exhausting. I just want them to like my music and yeah. be a part of the musical journey. Mm -hmm. I, and, but you know, like the reality is that you have to promote yourself also, and it comes good and bad with that. You've say. got to be great with lighting, great with video editing. Oh, yeah. Great <laughs> with whole... technology in general. I'm like, right, this is not my remit. It's like, I'm completely uncomfortable with that. <laughs> a lot of my videos as well that I put up, I'm usually taking the piss out of myself in some sort of way because I think yeah. it's a big laugh. Yeah. And then, like, I, I don't edit videos or anything. If I make a fuck up, it just goes on just as it is. And and But that's, I think, if you're that kind of person, people will like you more because people want to, people want to be able to relate to you i think that's yeah. really important you know so and, it, and and those who don't like you then that's that's fine too you know so exactly well yeah. you're not you're not gonna you're not gonna please all of the people all of the time no. and that no. is definitely not just don't call me an arsehole in the comments you don't need to do that you can think i'm an arsehole and but don't say it you know because we're all entitled to our own opinions isn't we and there's some people i think mean, yeah you're an arsehole but don't write it on their facebook page or their social media because that's just that's just rude and it's cruel it's unnecessary yeah, I, yeah. I agree i agree, yeah, I agree. With i've had a few of those can you tell oh well, yeah um, we all have <laughs> you know <laughs> again again i could sit all night and talk about the psychology of the people that feel the need to do that yeah it blows okay. my mind yeah get they, a life. They, Get a they, life. They don't have any Get a life. <laughs> but they sure. say hurt people hurt people. Yes, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But that, and that the thing is also life. that you can I, I think I brought it up in one of our episodes before, but the thing is you can get like a, a hundred really nice comments on your song, right? But then there's this one person that says that you're an asshole or whatever it yeah. could be. Something yeah. really rude. And it really, it's like a knife in your heart. And it you is. only focus no, on that one person. Yeah. And I think they know it. 
and yeah. they're just i don't know it's it's just oh my god <laughs> it's yeah i mean i i don't read comments anymore personally i mean yeah i don't get too many on um, i had a couple on my facebook that were a bit weird recently and mm. then i i had a, a a couple on instagram i don't get many thankfully even though my facebook and my instagram are open to anyone to have a look at yeah um, i don't really read the comments and i was actually thinking about turning comments off um because i don't feel like i need to hear what people think but, yeah but then sometimes it, you know it's nice for people to comment because they can learn from each other not just from me but like you know they go off on tangents oh you know where, where'd you get your t-shirt from or it could be anything yeah. completely yeah, yeah yeah you know but it's just like just stuff like that or you know where can i i don't know because some people can't find certain records that i'm on now and it'd just be nice for people to comment but then there is always that one or two mm -hmm. that just ruin it don't it they just yeah they can't help yeah. they can't help themselves exactly yeah can i can i ask you what brought you to be a counselor um well i had i had a bit of a a midlife crisis i suppose i sort of started doing introductions to counseling because i was always in i've been in therapy since like mid 20s hmm. so i've always found found that uh therapy has always been really really helpful beneficial yeah. Yeah. so okay and then in 2013 i decided to start training to be a counsellor and then I qualified in 2017. I haven't actually gone on to do any counselling since then but I must say I had like a bit of a midlife crisis and then and then I've sort of rebuilt myself from the bottom back up again. I, I suppose I had my son, I had postnatal depression, um, I'd lost my identity, I, am I a singer, am I a mum, how do I do this and then oh. my back was broken down as well so a lot happened yeah. in such a short time. Wow. Yeah, so then, and th from then on, I just started to become awake, you know, I just started to realise that I uh, hold the power to my own change, no one else, right, uh, kind of change from that victim mentality to, oh my god, I'm here where I am because of me, and only I can change that, and then, and then I sought after that play therapy, which I do think is life altering, because uh, it's dealing with the subconscious mind, rather than the conscious which is in normal talking therapy mm -hmm. and then uh, and then since then i've gone from being somebody who's heavily suffered with quite big anxiety on stage preferably like like mostly and uh and then i've i've kind of learned to kind of just accept myself more really Good. so do you yeah. know do you know how much courage it takes to just accept yourself yeah loads it's yeah. a big it's a big deal because it yeah. means you're having to face every demon every fear head on and yeah. just be okay with it yeah so and especially in in the music industry as well because you know growing up you know i always, i didn't always have my needs met as a child so and that was as i grew up it was always reinforced i'd always be working with people that didn't quite uh see my worth same with relationships you know mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah. it kind of bleeds into your adult life. If you don't right. address it, it becomes such a massive issue. You do need to address it if if you keep having the same problem. You know. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. that and, and and you know, with that um, in mind, if you kind of think about a type of person, and I've said this before in another podcast, but a type of person that actually becomes uh, a vocalist, a writer, it, it, it's it comes so much from the soul. There's so much yeah. sensitivity there. We are very sensitive beings. Yeah. Mm. And often um, it's because of those sort of childhood traumas, if you will, yeah. that kind of, that's where a lot of our kind of stuff comes from. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then here we are out in the music industry, putting our whole soul on the line and, yeah. and to people to judge us. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and 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 whoever's listening, you have no idea how courageous that is. Yeah, <laughs> to to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's oh, uh, our, our songwriting is like therapy sessions. It is. Everything that comes out in that session that you're yeah. writing that song is either something in the past, something that's happening now, 
or right. something that may happen in the future. It could be like a manifested. It's all right. this is almost like yeah. a manifesting thing as well. Right. Yeah. Because you know, if you're putting feeling into it, and that's when when you put feeling into something, you get the result. Right. So, yeah. So it is like therapy. Yes, it <laughs> is like therapy. I don't know if and I'm going to ask both of you this question. Um, so sometimes um, when when I when I've been writing a song, because I think I've said this before, you know, I literally I get the backing track in and I don't listen to it. I go and I go straight to record, hit record mm -hmm. and off I go. And we've said this before, you know, there's been, mm, mumblings going on. Right. But <laughs> but sometimes I and this is fairly often I have a moment where I get completely lost in the music or I get lost inside myself. Mm -hmm. and and i can feel almost like vibrations yeah yeah and and almost like sometimes the energy and uh, so i don't want to sound all magical thinking here but um yeah. but the energy and 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 even the, the the ideas all just start to flow in on their own and that to me is almost like you're riding yeah on a it, wave and yeah, that definitely. is therapeutic because it's um it's almost like it's about the process, not the outcome. Right. Yeah. And when you focus on the process and you just enjoy the process, that's why people find that people that have trouble in life, uh, I know for, for me, it's because I'm resisting everything. I'm like, oh, but I don't want it to go that way. But, oh, no, but how do I control right. that? It's about controlling everything. Right. Whereas if mm. you just let it be and just right. let it happen, it will happen. But if I hold it on, I'm holding on. <laughs> <laughs> well, this yeah. is it, but I think that's also because you know that's external kind of pressure because the external the ex expectation that oh you're going to finish a track oh you're going to finish it by this time oh it's going to sound like this oh it's not going to sound like that because yeah. I don't want it to sound like that and all this yeah. remit that's kind of chucked at you. Yeah, and I, I and I think as well like you know like some people might say right well we're looking for a vocal but we want it to be powerful we want it to be like emotional and I'm like yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that and then they're like right, we want it to be about this and we want it to be about that and I'm like listen if you want me to write the song just let me write it if you've got any yeah problems afterwards. I agree because if I go in writing this song and I think right well, I've got to do that and I've got to do that I'll fuck it up yeah because I'm not doing what I do naturally I'm being exactly. told what to do and I just think people just have to either go along and like what I do or, or find someone else. <laughs> I totally agree on this. It's so yeah. hard when somebody's like, oh, it has to be about this and that. Yeah. And instead of just giving me the song, let me do my thing and then yeah. let's see what happens, you know? Yeah. Best outcomes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It has to be, it has to come naturally. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. And I, and I am, I take ownership of this. I absolutely am shit when it comes to pressure. Yeah. If I have pressure oh, yeah. and I know something's got to be done by a certain time, I switch right off. Not like that either, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I can't sure. stand it. Can't yeah. Stand it. You can't always be creative either. Like yeah. there's some days no. I just think, ah, oh, bollocks to it, I'm not going to be creative today. I can't be yeah. you've got to want to do it. <laughs> if you try and sit down and do it when you don't want to do it, you're like, yeah. Nah. It's just like I call it mental constipation. Just like you can't get any lyrics. I out love that mental yeah. constipation. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to use that. That's yeah. great. Because you're trying to you're trying to think of something. You're like, why can't I be? But just don't be creative that day. And then when you do what you want to do, then the creative stuff comes. Yeah, totally. You know, further down the line. You know. I agree. Yeah, I agree. That's with the, that. the time restraint is what actually. Um, makes that harder because like people are wanting it next week and you're like well i've literally got no idea what i'm gonna do yeah you know? well yeah, I'll tell exactly. you, like, confessions time i have <laughs> i have i have let so many huge opportunities pass me by because i didn't want the pressure yeah and mm. and also at times i i i didn't have the confidence Mm -hmm. to, to to push forward yeah and and i don't regret it when i look back but i kind of think to myself you know i wish i was who i am now yeah yeah and yeah. And, and i wonder how that might have played out differently you know mm -hmm. but well, but there might be those opportunities if they had happened you may not have had that that epiphany where you could start to control what what right. you let in your life so right. i think sometimes things not happening even though they seem like it's a an opportunity missed actually is a 
uh, is a an opportunity for growth within yourself before other people come into the picture yeah no and i yeah. and i can see that and i think yeah. i think that's certainly uh, important to keep to take on board yeah you know being in the music industry it's kind of being in a little bubble you know it's a completely different life than maybe somebody's just going to work or whatever it is yeah. really like yeah you have to pay attention and like work really hard and uh, awkward hours you fly away suddenly suddenly in your inbox there's a request that you have to you know um do a vocal you know thing um at maybe 10 in the in the nights and yes. you have you like running that. around like a chicken <laughs> crazy like stress out chicken and like maybe the other family members are not like on the same level they might not <laughs> understand what's going on and they might be stressed out because they see you stressing around, you know? Yeah. And so how do you deal with like keeping the music industry and your private life kind of together? How do you explain to your family? Um, mm -hmm. Like how do you match it all together and make it work? Well, I do. I mainly do recording when my son's at school. I do recording yeah. at ten o'clock at night. I don't actually recommend doing recording at ten o'clock at night because I'm so knackered at that point. I just think <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I just want to sit and watch t watch shit on TV. That's all I want to yeah. do. <laughs> um, I guess everything that I've learned over the years about balance and about saying not being afraid of saying no to people. Mm -hmm. um, and going with that fit that feeling like when someone sends me something and i think oh I, i'm not really sure about that mm -hmm. i just think don't do it then so i just say no to it so i, I just say yes to the things that i really really love doing and um and i make sure that i just keep myself grounded i, I like peace i like puzzles you're gonna think this is crazy i often if i'm stuck on something or my brain is just it won't shut up mm. i've got a thousand piece puzzle I, I, i'll show you Love but this is literally it's going to fall over in a minute <laughs> i've got to get a new one it's hanging yeah. on by a thread that light honestly um, yeah. but i've got a thousand piece puzzle and when my brain is just oh works i just go to that and i just do it and all i think about is the puzzle it's yeah you know, you know and it's about just it's about just finding a balance really between yeah. real life and because music industry i don't think is real life mm. I think yeah. it's, you know, I, it I is think, a bubble. Yeah, I would say a bubble. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not real life. I just you know, yeah, yeah. But you mentioned before, like you had um, a job, right? And yeah. you went from having a normal job to suddenly, you know, flying off, doing music videos, things like that. Yeah. How did that? Like, did your family and the loved ones around you? adjust with that or was that hard to explain that you're going into this world now it was um it it was actually my mum loved it i mean yeah she's, she's no longer she used to go now, with you right yeah she used to go with me everywhere she used to absolutely mm. love it and i was 25 and so i had no children i was i was just being able to flit off for a week here or there and do whatever so yeah um, my friends adapted quite well because they'd get a lot of free drinks and they might go to <laughs> america every now and then and they'd get, they'd get all these free trips like, oh, like, who, wants to, who wants to come poland oh me you you yeah who wants to come america so like that was really <laughs> nice and and my husband at the time as well he used to go everywhere with me mm. so it we adapted really easily because we didn't have children if you asked me to do that now i'd have to say no to it because i he's my, you know my son's my main focus and I, if i yeah. could in the odd weekend and stuff like that i would do but um I, I kind of feel like that sort of gigging part of my life is not over but it's not a priority anymore mm -hmm. for me it's about being creative in the studio and then yeah. releasing it to the to the world yeah okay yeah okay mm. and, and on it's that topic again another little share yeah i'm sharing a lot today and i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but, um so so when can you know you were saying you came quite late to the party and you said that earlier on and yeah. and i came really late to the party because i i mean i I'd, I'd been singing like similarly doing stuff and bands and stuff like that and didn't get you know 
really fully signed until I was, I think, just 32. 32. Yeah, cool. and, wow. I, and I had three children. Oh, wow. Wow. And, yeah. and, I, and I was a single mom. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that was pretty wild. And, yeah. Yeah. and, and you know that, that dilemma because back then, you know, it, it was not cool to be a yeah. mom, right? You had mm. to be single. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't cool no. to be in your thirties either. There was yeah. this big mm -hmm. label on it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, it's not that way today. Thank God, yeah. but um, but back then it was such a thing. So fortunately, I looked a lot younger than than my years. But for me, I had to. I had this is going to sorry, and please don't judge me. Um, but you know, because I was part of the machine, um, I had to keep silent about having three children. Oh, yeah. I can and, understand why you had to do that. Yeah. 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 And so I had to keep silent about it. And, and, uh, but, but I, I did what you're doing uh, now. And that is, I then moved my whole setup, built my yeah. studio at home, mm -hmm. tried to make sure that I ended up doing stuff from which is why I stopped, I stopped gigging, stopped yeah. doing stuff like that because I mm. thought I could just be studio based and still yeah. do this. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Definitely. Yeah, you can. And I and I did that really successfully. Yeah. But not a lot of people knew that I had three children. Yeah. So that was it was just crazy. That must have yeah. been hard. It's almost like you've got two lives, really, ain't you? You've got this life where you're a hundred percent. And I'll tell you, one of my most wonderful memories was I was doing a gig in Wales and um I had just managed to out the fact that I had children to mm -hmm to the the label mm -hmm. and um and i said can i bring them with me oh, and and um i brought the two oldest actually and the and I, they got their backstage passes and we had uh oh gosh who did we have um he's 17 oh, and wicked. and Lovely i something. know and and all of these really big acts were were on um and they got to hang out with everybody at the and it was the best day of their life oh that's and, really good. Um, and that these are just nice. kind of nice memories that i have yeah, like that. yeah they've got a great idea yeah so that, and that's what he did yeah so yeah but you have to see it like as in visualize it what it would be because it is they're very, they're two very different jobs being yeah. a parent and 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 trying to be in the music and you're trying to fit both in and yeah. that's that's really that can be really hard to do that can and you, oh, you, yeah. that's when you have to learn how to say no to people and mm -hmm. i think as well if you're like a, a a bigger artist you need to have a really strong sense of self because you'll get lost otherwise yeah 100%. Yeah. yeah i and totally you, agree if, you, if you're people pleasing you're fucked honestly because you're yeah. just saying yes to everything yeah and before you know it you're like stressed out yeah it's no it's no life you really need to you really need to know who who you are really right yeah well comes with age and therapy yeah exactly <laughs> i i definitely was i definitely was in the people pleasing category yeah. without a doubt yeah oh yeah 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 i'm the same yeah. uh i'm very yeah. much like that yeah. sadly yeah. <laughs> but i do get moments light bulb moments where i realize like oh wow um i need to take a step back here mm. for a second you know yeah back to reality for a second and actually say no to something which yeah. i hate i hate saying no because i'm super excited about everything i i don't like saying no because i i feel bad for them but yeah I, yeah you know exactly I've, I've yeah. Isn't that that amazing we do mm -hmm. this and, and we're trying to protect them yeah yeah <laughs> and rescue them it's yeah, like, yeah. No, yeah that's the thing like you're just <laughs> like oh all oh, right then i'll do it for you and you already go what are you doing say no say no yeah yeah. Right. Better, yeah yeah exactly oh god need to and learn to say no that. more yeah but actually <laughs> linnea, linnea i swear to god you you astonish me sometimes because you know one minute you might be a, a bit people pleasing as you've said and then mm. all of a sudden it's like you go Woof. And there's yeah, a sudden this massive me. boundary that you've just like too far. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. That yes. That's great. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I sorry. Have it hidden in me somewhere. You know? yeah. If you're all okay, we're just gonna like move on to a slightly um more upbeat topic. If you're okay. okay. Imagine you're trapped mm -hmm. in a karaoke room for 24 hours. <laughs> okay. And can only sing one song on repeat. Yeah. 
Okay. What song would you choose? <laughs> Something easy. There'd be no Mariah Carey or Whitney or anything like that. I'll be fucked after singing that. <laughs> God, could you imagine? It'd have to be like, oh my God, what could it be? <laughs> it has to be saying fun everyone can dance to in like a madonna song or something like right. a clear of girl or like a virgin or something <laughs> like a virgin for 24 <laughs> hours wow yeah <laughs> but that's what i do at karaoke i don't get up on karaoke and give everyone what they think that i'm gonna i'll get up and, and sing i've uh, like well my sister sang move closer last time we did karaoke and i was saying like a virgin <laughs> I, didn't I, I don't want to get up and go hi because I don't take myself seriously as I think I yeah. 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 That would be like a virgin on repeat for 24 hours. Wine's got to be included for free, preferably. But yeah. And food. Yeah, what more could you want? Yeah. Um, are there any particular songs in your discography that hold a special significance for you? I would say spin it again. Probably I didn't write that song, but I really love it. Um, mm. I've always loved it. Uh, I think it vo shows me off vocally. Um, watching as well with Freemasons. That's always been a song that's, I think, is a classic house track. Mm. I've always loved. Um, God, there's uh, there's quite a few tracks, actually, but the, a lot of people have not heard of them. Uh, Ooh, why is that? They're all on my Spotify. Because the, the tracks that have done really well are the Freemasons ones and the Avicii right. ones. And the others have done well because of, um, you know, when you go onto the Amanda Wilson uh, Spotify, you can just see them and you can sure. look through the ones you want. So, but those, the top four ones, which was Disco's Revenge as well, mm. um, are the ones that have done the best, I suppose. Yeah. Mm. But there's loads, there's loads of stuff that I've done with Universal Library Music that is on Spotify as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're all there. So we've got to say this then. So those who are listening to this, I want you to go to Amanda's Spotify and okay. listen to those tracks right now. Okay. Would you be willing to sing us a little snippet? Okay. What would you like me to sing? Um, I, you, you choose. Oh, okay. Choose. All right, I'll sing a bit of Seek Bromance, seeing as everyone knows that yeah. one. All right, cool. Okay, All so right. I'll, sing a, I'll sing a first verse and a chorus. All right. Yeah. So okay. excited. All right, okay. I've been watching you. You've been hurting too. You give all your love. Nothing left to show. I have been there too. Alone in my despair. Watching life go by, no one who to share. Boy, you got it bad, but I got something good. I will share with you good in every way, yeah. You will never feel alone. My touch is such a rush. It all flows. I will give to you the love you seek and more. So what are you waiting for? I will give to you the love you seek and more. Oh, God, I did that. I ran out of breath. That's all right. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, my God. Amazing. That's just... Like, I get goosebumps. Thank you so much. You know, that is oh just... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You have wow, no wow, idea wow. How, how big fan I was, you know, when I came out. Like, you have no idea. This is like, <laughs> I'm getting a private concert here. I'm like, holy shit. I'm like, you're allowed to now. run out of breath. You're allowed <laughs> to run out of breath. That's a lot. It's like me I'm watching so many the backing vocals as well as the lead vocal as well. Uh, when I try and do the backing vocals and the lead, I'm like, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was amazing. Thank I'm so happy. So I will much. sleep like an angel today knowing that you sang to me. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. You made, right, you, thank you, you so made much our day. This. She's a super fan, by the yeah, way. Yeah, um, <laughs> time. Like your vocals, like holy shit, really goes like all over the place, and you're like, what? No, As they're so possible? they're so amazing. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Amanda, we noticed that you have released four tracks already this year. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's on so, Spotify yeah. at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're so happy. You graced us with your amazing voice and you keep doing that. And I want to hear more from you, obviously. So what's next from you? Is there anything you'd like to share with us and your fans? Okay, so I have um, 
I have an album that I'm working on at the moment. It's not dance music, guys. I'm afraid it's not. It's it's different. It's uh it's eighties synth, but with a current feel. So think like nineteen seventy five meets kind of. Wow. Yeah, like there's some there's some really good eighties bands uh, that, that are doing really cu current feel, but eight with with an eight nod to the eighties. So I will be doing. Um, I, I'm on track number. We're about to start track number six. So um, I'm going to do ten tracks. Amazing. And then we're gonna. We don't know what we're gonna do. We have got no. We've obviously not approached any labels yet. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I'm not even going to think about it yet. Okay. But as long as it's out there and it and people can listen to it, then I'm happy and I get paid. Obviously, that's yes, yes. That's absolutely. Yeah, love it. Great. Yeah, well, it's, so... it's a different avenue for me. It's not quite piano fairies yet, but it's that's later. But you know, I will definitely enjoy I, I love the 80s era anyway so i love it love it yeah. your voice can do anything so i'm sure it's going to be incredible i can't wait to to hear it right thank you it, my next year probably now though yes yeah. yeah, sure take some time to record and the whole shebang so next year yeah. I'll, I'll keep a look out for the new album oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> So I want to thank you, Amanda, for taking the time today to share your thoughts and your feelings. Yes. And you were so candid. And so I want to thank you for another fantastic episode of Love Vocals Nation. We want to extend a massive thank you to our special guest, the incredible Amanda Wilson. Thank you so much. You've been amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. For, join <laughs> for joining us today and gracing our podcast with her infectious energy and undeniable talent. Oh, it's been an you. absolute blast having her on the show <laughs> and we hope you all enjoyed this episode as much as we did remember to stay connected with amanda on her social media platform yeah. because you never know the amazing musical adventures that she's going to embark on next like her 80s stuff yeah. that's coming out it's going to mm -hmm. be amazing Remember, Love Vocals is more than just a podcast. It's a movement for positive change for vocalists and songwriters in the music industry. So support us in this vital change. So keep tuning in. Mm -hmm. um, See you so next time. Yeah. As Linnea said, stay hydrated. Keep grooving. <laughs> keep grooving. Stay hydrated. <laughs> See you next week. Love of music. <laughs>